President Trump, as uh, you mentioned earlier in the conversation, was a great disruptor. Uh, he was also, I think, again, speaking from an Australian perspective, inclined to want to embrace the idea of um, isolationism again in America. Uh, what sort of impact do you think next year's presidential race might have, both the race itself uh, and then even beyond on, on America's engagement with the rest of the world and their willingness to, um, engage, to, to really tackle some of these hard issues? Let me make a couple of points. Uh, one is, I, I don't think that Trump was an isolationist. Uh, you want to remember that it was Trump who uh, jettisoned engagement policy toward China and adopted a containment policy toward China. Trump believed that China was a real threat and that the United States had to contain, if not roll back, China. And that's not isolationism. Isolationism is going home. You white thought that the United States had an isolationist impulse and that we were not going to be in Asia for Australia or for our other allies. That's not true. And that's not what Donald Trump thought. Donald Trump did want to pull out of Europe and he did want to have good relations with the Russians. I personally think that was the smart policy, as I tried to make clear before. I would have pulled out of Europe, pivoted fully to Asia. And I think that's what Trump was trying to do. Now, I think one might get the sense that Trump was an isolationist, even though he talked about containing China, because he treated his or he treated America's allies so badly. I think one of Trump's real liabilities was that he was not good at working with allies. I think Biden is much better at working with allies. Uh, but, uh, but Trump's basic instincts were not at all isolationist. Uh, and uh, as I said to you before, you want to remember that the American foreign policy establishment is committed to running the world. Isolationism is not in the blood. Now, my final point is that Donald Trump and Barack Obama both ran on the platform that they were going to fundamentally alter American foreign policy and they were going to reduce our commitments around the world. They were going to get out of the forever wars, not start any more forever wars and so forth and so on. And they were both elected. Both of them were defeated in the end by the foreign policy establishment. Obama said in a famous exit interview with the Atlantic Monthly right before he left office uh, in 2017 that he had been defeated by the blob, which is the euphemism we use for the American foreign policy establishment. President Obama, despite the fact that he was elected to fundamentally change American foreign policy, did not do so. I would argue that the same was true with President Trump, except for China policy. And the reason that happened was not because of President Trump, it was because, but it was because the underlying structure of the system went from unipolarity to multipolarity, just as Trump was coming into office. But if you think about Trump's relations with the Russians, just think about it. Trump said, he wanted to have good relations with Vladimir Putin. He wanted to have good relations with Russia. Trump made it clear he wanted to put an end to NATO and get out. Well, NATO expansion continued under Trump. Trump was the one who in December 2017 decided to arm the Ukrainians. Obama wouldn't arm them. Obama said, we'll train the Ukrainians, but the last thing we want to do is arm them. Trump armed the Ukrainians. Right. And by the time Trump left office, our relations with the Russians were worse than they were when Obama left office. This is despite Trump's intention of improving relations with the Russians. Now, you ask yourself, why was that the case? It's very simple. Trump was no match for the blob. 
He was no match for the foreign policy establishment. And if he gets reelected in 2024, the idea that he's going to come in and fundamentally alter American foreign policy is extremely unlikely. It just doesn't work that way. Presidents do not have that kind of power. They can make some changes for sure, but fundamentally altering foreign policy, I don't think so. Uh, and I don't think Trump's going to get out of Ukraine. And I don't think Trump is going to do much different on China than Joe Biden is doing. In fact, if you look at what Joe Biden has done since becoming president, he's followed in Donald Trump's footsteps. Joe Biden, when he was vice president, and Joe Biden, when he was head of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, was an arch proponent of engagement with China. When President Trump moved into the White House in January 2017. One of the first things he did was flush engagement down the toilet bowl. He got rid of it completely. Four years later, when Biden replaces Trump in the White House, does he go back to engagement, which he had been a proponent of when he was vice president and head of the Senate Foreign Relations? No, he does not. What Biden does is he actually follows in Trump's footsteps. And indeed, one could argue he puts in place a tougher containment policy toward China than Donald Trump did. And the reason this is the case is because the structure of the system left him with no choice. We now lived in a multipolar world. Biden had little maneuver room. He did what he had to do, and he didn't behave the way he had acted when he was in a unipolar world. So you see the constraints that are on any president are really quite marked. And Donald Trump will have not a whole heck of a lot of maneuver room should he get reelected.